So, Father, tonight, I thank you for your word, the workings of your mighty spirit. Father, I thank you for the unction to minister, Father God, deep beyond, Father God, even that which the world can touch. I thank you, Father God, for the wells of salvation. I thank you for the river that never will run dry. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for a tongue of a pen of a ready writer that we can write our own ticket for life. That, Father God, we become the prophets of our own lives, framing our worlds with the words of our minds, knowing, Father God, that faith brings to pass calling those things that be not as though they were. In Jesus' precious name, if you believe that tonight, shout a big amen. amen. Glory to God. We'll turn around and hug somebody's neck, shake somebody's hand tonight. Amen. We're going to just get right into the Word just for a couple of moments, and then we'll see where the Spirit of God will take us tonight. In Jesus' precious name, Father, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Can I have another handkerchief, please, for uh, Malachi's leg? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. Glory to God. Can you believe that we're through Thanksgiving on to Christmas? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, Karen, myself, we had a phenomenal time in, in Ireland and uh, north and south. Of course, it was just an amazing time in the spirit. I know that you all had an amazing time here. Amen. So much ministry that was going on and so many people's families, you know, going here, there and everywhere over Thanksgiving. But it was a wonderful Thanksgiving. Amen. And we just pray that you had as good a Thanksgiving as what we did. Amen. Praise the Lord. It was so wonderful. We had six very powerful services in, uh, in Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. And of course, to see what the Spirit of God is doing after these years of carnal kind of myself coming here and to see the flames and the fire burning so brightly, it was just amazing. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise for that? Just amazing. Come on, give the Lord praise and honor and glory. It's amazing. And you can understand from carnal kind of myself, you know, from, you know, coming from there, if you were coming from another place and you were involved in works and all of those different things and you know, I tell you to go back and just to re, it's just amazing what the Lord is doing. Amen. And we are thrilled. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being part of that. Thank you for praying for us. And I know some of you sent finances as well. Praise the Lord. And we're part of that. So seed into that. And, and uh, I know that I tell you, there's a reward coming back to you. The precious lives that were touched. Amen. God is into people. I'm going to say it again. God is into people. Amen. And I believe that relationships are so, so important, if, the, if not the most important thing. Amen. And that's just not just, you know, just one week or two weeks. I believe that the Lord is into relationships, lifelong relationships, because he wants things accomplished. Praise the Lord. You know, Karn and myself have said this for years. Amen. It's, it's all like a good book. You know, it's like there's so many chapters in each book and, you know, there's so many players in each chapter and maybe there are several prayer, pr players in one chapter that are not in chapter three, not in chapter five, but they are in chapter four and they are in chapter seven. And we have to look at life like that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I tell you, this is a long road and God has a lot to do through each and every one of us. Amen. God is a plan and that plan is a good plan. I'm going to say it again. God is a plan, and that plan is a good plan. I'm going to say it one more time. God is a plan, and that plan is a good plan. Praise the Lord. I have a couple of uh, handkerchiefs that are anointed with oil tonight. I want you to stretch your hands forward, begin to release your faith. Pray in the Spirit with me now, please. Hallelujah. This comes from Acts chapter 9, the Apostle Paul. There was a revival happening at the time. Amen. And when people touched his clothing, they were healed. And we just thank God tonight that, that, that we can believe, amen, that God is no respecter of persons, that what he did once, he will do again in Jesus' precious name. We can bear testimony to God's power and operation, amen. We just pray over Lori's mother right now. We command her heart to come into line, amen. We command this heart to be whole and healed in Jesus' name. Whatever's going on, we just command it to settle down 
In the name of Jesus, come into line and be whole. And also we pray over Malachi's leg tonight. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. One of our, our, our young uh, children, praise the Lord, hurt his leg out playing this morning. Amen. But I tell you, we just pray over his leg in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord that it will be a speedy healing in Jesus' name and no sign of any hurt. Come on, do you believe this tonight? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Say this with me. I bind the spirit of accident, sickness, disease, and infirmity in the name of Jesus. Now, say it, say it like we mean it. I bind spirit of sickness, infirmity, accidents in Jesus' precious name. No weapon formed against me or my family shall prosper. I bring it to naught. In the name of Jesus, right now, this thing come for it. I bring it to naught. I bring it to naught. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'd like you to go to Acts 10, 34, please. We're going to read. And, uh, of course, I'm in this. God is good. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want to read to you tonight. I did this while I was in Ireland, and I really felt the prompting of the Spirit uh, to bring it to you afresh tonight. Some of you do know, and some of you have heard um, of a prophecy by Brother Tommy Hicks. Um, some of you do know, and how many people do know it? Wave at me right now. It's a prophecy by Tommy Hicks. Wave at me if you don't know it. Praise the Lord, as many as. Uh, so this is for you tonight, the rest of us that know it off by heart. Amen. <laughs> word for word. Praise the Lord. You can quote it with me. But I want to start here at Acts 10. Uh, 34 to 38 and these are be, have been meditations of my heart and uh, I know that you all have a meditations of your own heart you know you lie upon your bed like David meditating before the Lord isn't that wonderful how that just gives us you know that that permission to lie on our beds and meditate before the Lord amen but it's so important that we give time to process amen what it is that the Spirit of God is actually saying Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. So look at this in Acts 10, 34. And it says, And Peter opened his mouth and said, Most certainly and thoroughly I now perceive and understand that God shows no partiality and is no respecter of persons. This is huge. I want you to get a revelation of this. Because it is exactly as he means it to be heard. There's no partiality. There's no respecter of persons. God is in this for all of us. God loves us. He gave his son for us. I'm going to say it again. God loves us. It's very elementary, but it's powerful. God loves us. Father, I thank you tonight for a fresh revelation of your love for us. In the name of Jesus. I know that we love God, right? We love him. But a fresh revelation of his love for us. I believe that's a game changer. Something happens right there when we get a revelation that he loves us. Hallelujah. But in every nation, he who venerates and has a reverential fear for God, treating him with worshipful obedience and living upright is acceptable to him and sure of being received and welcomed by him. You know the contents of the message which he sent to Israel announcing the good news, the gospel of peace by Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. The same message which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee after the baptism preached by John, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power how he went about doing good, and in particular, in particular, yes. curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. Yes. We'll say that again. God was with him. Go to verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all who were listening to the message. 
And the believers from among the circumcised, the Jews who came with Peter, were surprised and amazed because the free gift of the Holy Spirit had been bestowed and poured out largely even on the Gentiles. Ladies and gentlemen, the Spirit of God is going to move on people that we don't even think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For they heard them talking in unknown tongues, languages and extolling and magnifying God. Then Peter asked, can anyone forbid or refuse water for baptizing these people, seeing that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Then they begged him to stay on there for some days. It's always good when, a, when people are begging a preacher to stay on several extra days. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So go back with me, please, to verse 38. This is so important. I want you to get a real hearty revelation of this. At how Jesus went about, come on, doing good. Yes. Doing good. There was no bad. We said it this morning. Come on, God created everything and it was good. He approved of it. Then his son comes and what does his son do? He goes about doing good. Like father, like son. So elementary, but yet so powerful. What is it that we're called to do? To go about and do I've been thinking about this. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it profitable for us that the Father always watched what he said? Imagine the Father saying things like we say. This place would be chaotic. Thank God there's at least one in the universe that we can trust with words. <laughs> and the question is begged then, can he trust us with words? With the blessing of being able to speak. Because he says we create the fruit of our lips. If we truly understand Hebrews 11, where it says our worlds are framed and that there is death and life in the power of the tongue. If we truly had a revelation, then would we be so frivolous and careless with things that we say? Because Jesus didn't come and just say anything. Because scripture says he only said what he heard the Father say and do what the Father would have him do. Something, something has shifted. Something has changed. I don't know about you, but in my life also, something has shifted. Something has changed. And I do believe it's the hour that we're living in. I sense a stirring of anointings. I, I sense a stirring of a, of a strength. And, and, and an awareness, a cautiousness. Not to do this, to do this. Not to go there, but to do this. Go there to hold things a little bit more tightly. I'm just aware. I'm just aware of other people's conversations. I'm aware of my conversation. I'm aware of things that other people are saying. I'm aware of what I am saying. At times, you know, I've had a couple of conversations recently and, and I've said, now, what benefit was there for that? Where is it leading? Hallelujah. Say this with me. He went about doing. <laughs> he went about doing. 24, we're going to go about doing. How many people believe that you truly have received an anointing from the Holy One? So how many people believe with all your heart then that there is an anointing on you to do great things? Yes. Great things. Everybody say great things. Great. Pray in the spirit with me right now all over this room, those that are watching online. 
Come on now, think about what you're praying. Think about how the Spirit of God is moving, why the Spirit of God is here, the Spirit of God is in you, the Spirit of God is on you, to do great things, great things, great things. This is Sunday Night Flow. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the Lord. Manjolo Kovrianzai, Manjolo Kovrian Blanker Silla Kalabanan Christ, Yavroshin Shavors, Merzer Benosolom Vrea Kalava, Maratovania, Manjolo Porvenishalo Vramana Kanavania Sto, Hallelujah, 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 Manjolo Korve, Manjolo Manasola Pabramanana Solo Kovai, Manjona Bombria Stolomon Brakadazolo Popre, Manakia Vahansu. Come on, something's stirring. Something's happening. Eyes to see, ears to hear. Words, words given by the power of God, given by the unction of heaven. Words to say, words that will open, words that will close, words that will lock, words that will unlock, words that will form, words that will create. Now look at me, this is so important. So it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So we understand that there are weapons that are formed and they are aimed your direction. Ephesians 6 tells us that we have the armor of God. Now it's very important that we're walking through these days that we are securing this armor. This was just not a once revelation to you way back when you got it from Brother Rick or you got it from somebody else. You, you, you went through a period where all you did was study the armor of God and, and now you're out this side and you know what? You're just living life. We need to secure that the shield of faith is an operation. You heard me allude to it today. Amen. We're in it tonight. I want you to shout it out. The shield of faith is an operation. The helmet of salvation is an operation. I don't care what weapon that is formed against you. It will not prosper. That shield of faith will quench every fiery dart of the enemy and will bring to naught the plans of darkness. In the name of Jesus. I want you to touch your head right now. Come on. I know every single one of us have to deal with certain things at certain times, thoughts that want to come through, things that want to, you know, just come and begin to buzz around your head, buzz around your mind. We take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, we take authority over that. Come on, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. What do we do? We take a, we what? We take captive every thought that is contrary to the plan and the purpose of God. What is the plan and the purpose of God? Well, we're going to hear it in the book. We're going to get it in the Bible. It's not something, you know, that comes out of a puff of smoke. Amen. We know his ways. He will lead us and guide us into all truth. His word will reveal to us the plan and the purpose for our lives in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. Come on. We've got a more sure word of prophecy in the name of Jesus. It's not what I want. It's what he wants. In the name of Jesus, it's not what I want, it's what he wants. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we cast down vain imaginations vain imaginations things that want to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God come on we cast it down 
That means you catch yourself sitting dwelling on stuff which is negative, things which are wrong. What did he say, she say, what did they think? Why are they acting like that? What is going on? You better watch yourself because a spirit of rejection, I'm telling you, is so subtle. It wants to come in and it wants to bring to you shame. I don't know how that shame comes, but that shame wants to come and that shame wants you to wear it. I want you to declare right now, I bind the spirit of rejection in the name of pastor. Why would you say that? Because it is so rampant. The enemy is whispering to people. Whispering. Oh, you haven't heard from such and such in a while. You haven't seen such and such in a while. Oh, they haven't, oh, they haven't, oh, 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 in a while. Lift your hands if you understand what I'm talking about. It's the spirit of rejection. Now, why would we even give our time to sit and thinking about stuff like that? When the Lord clearly, Philippians 4 says, rejoice, and again I say, rejoice. This is very expensive real estate. I was purchased by the blood of Jesus, and you can't get any more valuable. So this piece of real estate right here is very valuable that Jesus would give his blood for it. And if God give me the ability to think, then he give me the ability to think right. And that I can secure a a sort of poison. Make sure that my head is screwed on correctly. God is good. (laughs) I'm going to say it again. God is good. And God has good plans for me. And God has good plans for you. And God has good plans for the person beside you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care how long it takes. It's a good plan. And it's coming to pass. And it will not be frustrated. In the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. It will not be frustrated. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to shut it out again. It will not be frustrated. And just because other people don't see it doesn't mean to say that it's not there. Something good is happening. I said something good is happening. Something good is happening in my family. Something good is happening in my life. Something good is happening to your business. Something good is happening. Something good is happening. Something good is happening. Oh, Pastor Paul, that was for this morning. No, this is life. This is for right now. Not just because there was a great flow this morning. It's right now. I'm in this. Something good is happening. Do you know that relationships are destroyed? Because people do not take captive thoughts. That's right. That's right. That's the truth. The enemy blows in like smoke screens and and just seeds of whatever. You heard the story, you know, that the this farmer's tractor had broken down. But he knew the farmer beside him was a little bit, you know, ornery. Wasn't that pleasant of a guy, but he needed a tractor. He needed some things to be done, so there was nothing else he could do, but he had to go over to the other farmer and ask him to borrow the tractor. So the other farmer's out in the field with his tractor, and this other farmer that needed the tractor started walking towards the other farmer with the tractor, and he was rehearsing what he was going to say. He was going over it, do you mind if I could use your tractor, all those different... By the time he got to the farmer, he said, stuff your tractor. (laughs) 
How many times in our lives have we got ourselves to the place of what we think about another person that we say, stuff it? Or something like it. Maybe that's too Irish for you. Forgive me, I'm just back. I'll get the rough edges off me by the next weekend. Go on, lift your hands if you've ever talked yourself out of something. Something that was good. Profitable. Benefit. Shut it out. I bind that spirit of rejection. Come on, say it like you mean it. I bind that spirit of rejection in the name of Jesus. Then what do we do with that thought? We begin to say things, speak things. We begin to give form and shape to those thoughts. That's right, that's right. And then it becomes a reality. But rejection brings with it a sense of shame. There's not one person within the sound of my voice has done anything to be rejected for because you have been accepted in the beloved. And if a person has an issue with you and it's not your issue, then let it drop. Don't give it time. Take authority over it. Bind anything spiritual that is attached to it. You know, people can be fleshy once in a while. Look at Geneva and say, he's talking to you. People can be fleshy once in a while. I'm not even talking spiritual, but there are spirits that are at work. And those spirits are dangerous. And they want to rob you of your future. And I'm here to declare to you tonight, they're not going to do that in the name of Jesus. Come on, shut it out. The best has yet to come. Now, after reading Acts uh, 10, I want us to go over to Luke 10. You glad you can? Yes. It was a powerful morning today, wasn't it? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. One of these days, I'll get a full sermon out. <laughs> but you know what we need is that rhema word. You know, sometimes we can get lost in all of the stuff that said what God actually did say. But you couldn't miss what he was saying today. Something good. Something good. Something good. Something good. If you missed this morning, you missed it real bad. Praise the Lord. Something good is happening. Look 10, look at this. Look 10 and verse 18. Now this is very, very important that you see this. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like a lightning flash from heaven. Where is Satan? He's in this realm. The power, the prince of the power of the air. He's not walking before the Lord. And he is the accuser of the brethren. It's amazing. If you if you are if you work with yourself just in 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 realness honest to goodness, if you work with yourself, you can find yourself at times working with that spirit of accusation where stuff begins to start rising within you against another person. If you're honest with yourself, you can recognize the processes of that power of the air. Wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. Where you can, you can sense that accusing thing there is there's something building within your processes against another individual of an accusatory nature 
Maybe this is too real tonight. Because how does he work? He's not up there with the magic wand going poof. And now I think ugly about a person. These things are built. And if you can be honest with yourself, challenge yourself. Why am I thinking like this regarding this person? Even if they did you wrong, the Bible says you are to forgive them, not build mindsets against them. Because that's where Satan wants to take you. He doesn't want relationships to be restored and reconciled. He wants relationships fractured and destroyed so that they can never come back together again. So we must work with light. We must work with the spirit of God. And when he said that he comes to illuminate our darkness, and when he comes as the spirit of truth to lead and guide us into all truth, then we have to work with him to literally tear apart these infrastructures that Satan wants to build within individuals that keep people apart. Something good is happening. You know, the enemy could come to you and start to build something within your, your whole thought process against me. I could be innocent. But yet, just because wrong place, wrong time, right place, wrong time, wrong place, right time, all of those different things, a word that was not right with inflections and all of those different things, and then the enemy start to build something in. Well, well, pastor, no, he, he's... You see, how, that's how simply this thing is done. And that spirit of the world is geared towards that. The power of the prince of the air wants to get you into a position, an unhealthy position of accusation. Now you, you, you're working with the spirit of accusation and a spirit of rejection. Now that's a dangerous. <laughs> because that can pull you right out of the plan and purpose of God. That can fracture relationships that are supposed to work together. So I'm mindful of these things. Many times my mind goes to a place and it's like the Lord says to me, why is your mind over here? But he has the permission to say that because we have that type of relationship. Why are you dwelling on that? Why are you thinking on that? You could even say, why are you so vain to be thinking like that? You know what I've realized in life? A lot of people are not thinking about you the way you think everybody's thinking about you. <laughs> Maybe we should say the benediction and go home. How many people's getting something out of this tonight? Come on, shut it up. We're going to make it. And we're going to make it healthy all the way in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And we're going to walk out like the days, even in this time of the end times, when it seems to be the world is in chaos, we're going to be in order. Amen. With our heads screwed on the right way, knowing that God is doing great things. Hallelujah. Something good. Shut it up. Something good. Come on, say it again. Something good. Come on, stop thinking that you're misunderstood and people don't understand you and people don't whatever. No, give it a break. <laughs> Enjoy your life, guys. It's the only one you have. Enjoy it. Enjoy it immensely. So verse 18, it says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. So he's out around the neighborhood. 
You have to understand that. He's not, he's not off there with some big pitchfork and he's out around the neighborhood, but you have authority over him. Just ensure that your confession is more than just a bunch of words being flung out into space. Make sure you mean it. I take authority. Something happens, something changes. How many people testify that tonight? When you actually rise up and you say, I'm not listening to this no more. Come on, how many people can testify to that? You sitting there, how many people have sat around thinking about the wrong stuff? Some of you haven't, you're amazing. Praise the Lord. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you, what you how you do it. But how many people can testify that the moment that you open your mouth and say, shut up, I'm not listening to this anymore. How many people testify things change right there? I know you're all going to nod your head tonight and all of those different things, but I'm telling you, it's time for some of you to speak. And it's time for you to stop dwelling in big fat heads, thinking about everything that is wrong. They're coming to take you away. Ho, ho, he, he. The worst case scenario. We're never going to make it. We're never going to accomplish it. It's never going to happen. And you solidify, you fortify the negative. And then you pick someone and it's their fault. I'll speak over here. And then all of a sudden you pick somebody and it's their fault. It's their fault. You're not. No. I have a mouth. And I frame my own world. I write my own ticket for life. And if one man doesn't open a door for me, another one's going to. Why? Because God has given me favor. Come on, lift your hands and receive it right now. Favor. Favor. If it doesn't happen one way, you hold on because it's going to happen another way. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. If it doesn't happen one way, it'll happen another way because as long as you're in agreement with your future, it's going to come to pass. You have to stay in agreement with your future. You have to stay in agreement with what God is saying because there are forces that are at work to stop you. But I'm telling you, you can step it up with your mouth and say, I cannot be stopped because what is of God cannot be stopped, overthrown, or destroyed. I don't care what man does to me. Amen. God is for me. And if God is for me, who then can be against me? If man doesn't see what is on my life, God knows what's on my life. And as long as I see what's on my life. Feels good in here. Woo! Feels good. It'll feel good in your house tomorrow morning when you, I'm telling you, read the right act. And you set things right in the spirit in the name of Jesus. And you rise up and you just speak to those demon forces and you say, I tell you, this is the way it's going to be. Praise God. You might not have heard of me in a while. You might not have heard from me in a while, but I want to let you know I'm back. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got to begin to show these realms, these forces that you actually believe what God has said about you. Hallelujah is right. So verse 19 says, Behold, I've given you a little bit of authority and a little bit of power. And if you're having a good day, you can trample upon serpents and scorpions. I wouldn't just try it every day. And a little bit of physical and a little bit of mental strength and just a little bit of ability over some of the powers that the enemy possesses. 
And when you're having a good day, nothing shall harm you. Put it up on the screens for me, please, so that everybody can see that that was heresy. Look, 10, 19. Amplified, see. Hello. <laughs> Behold. Everybody said, Behold. Behold. Do it like you're in a theater. Behold. Behold. I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. Nothing. Nothing. I want you to shut it out. I'm going to stop living like the casualty. Come on, say it like you mean. I'm going to stop living like a casualty. Amen. I'm telling you, every couple of months that insecurity comes back like a tsunami. We take authority over that insecurity in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's lay an axe to the root of that. I am accepted in the beloved. Amen. I am loved by God. I am loved by the Father. And I am seated and clothed and in my right mind. And behold, he has given me power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing. Nothing. Maybe I'm just up here runting myself, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm telling you, if your world is like, like mine, then you're going to get plenty of opportunity to step it up and take authority. And I'm just vulnerable enough tonight to stand up here and say that this is a fight, but it's a good fight. And we can fight the good fight of faith. And we've been given the tongue of a pen of a ready writer. And we can take authority. Shut it out. We can take authority. And we know that we have heaven backing us up. We know that we have God backing us up. We know that we have everything at our disposal that heaven has to back us up. You know, when Jesus was going through what he was going through, the, the beatings and the crucifixion, he could have called on all the angels and all those things he didn't, but it leads us to the thought that he could have called on them. But we can call on them. Hebrews 1 says that they are sent to help us, to minister to us. You're not going to do this, ladies and gentlemen, working out of your emotional capacity. In the moment that you feel yourself slipping over there, you're going to have to yank that chain and say, get back over here in the spirit. Because that whole emotional realm, that whole soulish realm is going to keep you down with a cement block around your neck and hold you down so that you think that you are the worst worm that ever crawled out of the soil. Maybe I've said enough tonight. But I came packing tonight. Anybody came packing? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, fully loaded in the name of Jesus. Put it up there again for me, please. Behold, I've given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. Hallelujah. So Father, we settle it tonight in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands one more time. I want to pray this prayer over you. Father God, make these precious people sensitive. Sensitive, Father, to what's going on. Any traps that the enemy's trying to set, make them sensitive to that. Make them sensitive, Father God, in their relationships to traps that the enemy is trying to set. Don't buy the lie. 
Don't buy the lie. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. Don't buy the lie. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be very sure before the next time you say something like, well, they don't care about another individual. You have to be very cautious. People are busy. And if you feel like you've been forgotten about by someone, forgive them. But it may be very innocent. And they may not be wired like you. I mean, if you're always wanting to put soup in a flask and go to somebody's house and feed them and all those different things, not everybody's wired like that. And sometimes we can get into unhealthy judgment because we think that everybody should think the same as us. We think that everybody should want to do the same as us. And what's wrong with you because you don't? But there's nothing wrong with anybody. It's just that you're wired differently than someone else. Thank God for uniqueness. Pastor Carnes preaching away at the front here. Security, if she gives any more lip, I want you to take her out. <laughs> Come on, are you receiving something out of this tonight? I'm telling you, we're going to need this. You're going to look back at this. You're going to say, thank God he preached that. A couple of Sunday nights before Christmas. Because I believe this is the word of the Lord. I truly believe this is God. I believe it's God. That these two services today, they're God. I people tell me today, God, Pastor, God, Pastor, I need it. What was said today? God is good. God is good. And he has good plans for each and every one of us. Good plans. Good plans. Plans to prosper us. Hallelujah. 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 Look at your neighbor say, it's not over by a long shot. Praise the Lord. Now, this is wordy, but I want to read it to you because I want it out there so that you can listen to it. I'm going to read it, and then you can listen to it again. But I want you to hear it because what Tommy Hicks saw, I believe we're, we're seeing. I believe it with all my heart. The Lord has brought me back to it time and time again, but something different about it this time. My message begins July 25th, about 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. And I had hardly fallen asleep when the vision and the revelation that God gave me came before me. The vision came three times exactly in detail, the morning of July 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the end time ministries. The greatest thing that the Church of Jesus Christ has ever been given lies straight ahead. It is so hard to help men and women realize and understand the thing that God is trying to give his people in the end times. I received a letter several weeks ago from one of our native evangelists down in Africa, down in Nairobi. This man and his wife were on their way to Tanganyika, and they could neither read nor could they write, but we had been supporting them for over two years. As they entered into the territory of Tanganyika, they came across a small village. The entire village was evacuating because of a plague that had hit the village. He came across natives that were weeping, and he asked them what was wrong. And they told him of their mother and their father who had suddenly died and they had been dead for three days. They had to leave. They were afraid to go in and they were leaving them in the cottage. He turned and asked them where they were. They pointed to the hut and he asked them to go with him, but they refused. They were afraid to go. The native and his wife went to this little cottage and entered in where the man and woman had been dead for three days. He simply stretched forth his hand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and spoke the man's name and the woman's name and said, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to come back into your bodies. 
instantaneously these two heathen people who had never known Jesus Christ as their savior sat up and immediately began to praise God. The spirit and the power of God came into the life of those people. To us that may seem strange and a phenomenon, but that is the beginning of these end time ministries. God is going to take the do-nothings and the nobodies and the unheard ofs and the new accounts, and he is going to take every man and every woman, and he is going to give to them this outpouring of the Spirit of God. In the book of Acts, we read that in the last days, God said, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. I wonder if we realize what he meant when God said, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. I do not think I fully realized, nor could I understand the fullness of it. And then I read from the book of Joel. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. Joel 2, 23. It is not only going to be the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, but he is going to give to his people in the last days a double portion of the power of God. As the vision appeared to me after I was asleep, I suddenly find myself in a great high distance. Where I was, I do not know, but I was looking down upon the earth. Suddenly the whole earth came into my view. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue came before my sight from the east and the west, the north and the south, and I recognized every country and many cities that I had been in. And I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the great sight before me. And at that moment when the world came into view, it began to lightning and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downward and I was facing the north. Suddenly I beheld what looked like a great giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic and so great. His feet seemed to reach the North Pole and his head to the South. Its arms were stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this be a mountain or this be a giant, but as I watched, I suddenly beheld a great giant. I could see his head was struggling for life. He wanted to live, but his body was covered with debris from head to foot. And at times this great giant would move his body and act as though it would even raise up at times. And when it did, thousands of little creatures seemed to run away. Hideous creatures would run away from this giant. And when he would become calm, they would come back. All of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hand towards heaven, and then it lifted its other hand. And when it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from this giant and go into the darkness of the night. Slowly, this great giant began to rise, and as he did, his head and his hands went into the clouds. And as he rose to his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and filth that was upon him. And he began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord. And as he raised his hands, they went in even onto the clouds. Suddenly, every cloud became silver, the most beautiful silver I have ever known. As I watched this phenomenon, it was so great, I could not even begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched it, and I cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, what is the meaning of this? And I felt as if I was actually in the Spirit, and I could feel the presence of the Lord even as I slept. And from those clouds, suddenly there came great drops of liquid light raining down upon this mighty giant. And slowly, slowly, this giant began to melt, began to sink itself into the very earth itself. And as he melted, his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. And this great rain began to come down. Liquid drops of light began to flood the very earth itself. As I watched this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people over the face of the earth. As I beheld the sight before me, people stood up all over the world. They were lifting their hands and they were praising the Lord. At that very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes towards the heavens and suddenly I saw a figure in white in glistening white, the most glorious thing that I have ever seen in my entire life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew it was the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And he stretched forth his hand, and as he did, he would stretch it forth to one and to another and to another. And as he stretched forth his hand upon the nations and the people of the world, men and women, as he pointed toward them, this liquid light seemed to flow from his hands into them. And a mighty anointing of God came upon them, and those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord. I do not know how long I watched it. It seemed it went into days and weeks and months and beheld this Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand. But there was a tragedy. There were many people as he stretched forth his hand that refused the anointing of God and the call of God. And I saw men and women that I knew, people that I felt would certainly receive the call of God. But as he stretched forth his hand towards this one and toward that one, they simply bowed their head and began to back away. And each of those that seemed to bow down and back away seemed to go into darkness. Blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere. I was bewildered as I I watched it. But these people that he had anointed, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, in Africa, England, Russia, China, and America, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forward in the name of the Lord. And I saw these men and women as they went forth. They were ditch diggers. They were washerwomen. They were rich men. They were poor men. I saw people who were bound with paralysis and sickness and blindness and deafness. As the Lord stretched forth to give them this anointing, they became well. They became healed and they went forth. Lift your hand and say, that's me. I take it in the name of Jesus. And this is the miracle of it. This is the glorious miracle of it. Those people would stretch forth their hands exactly as the Lord did. And it seemed as if there was this same liquid fire in their hands. As they stretched forth their hands, they said, according to my word, be thy made whole. As these people continued in this mighty anti-ministry, I did not fully realize what it was. And I looked it to the Lord and said, what is the meaning of this? And he said, this is that which I will do in the last days. I will restore all that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, I will restore all that they have destroyed. This my people in the end times will go forth as a mighty army. They shall sweep over the face of the earth. As I was at this great height, I could behold the whole world. I watched these people as they were going to and fro over the face of the earth. And suddenly there was a man in Africa. And in a moment he was transported by the spirit of God. And perhaps he was in Russia or China or America or some other place and vice versa. All over the world, these people went and they came through fire and through pestilence and through famine. Neither fire nor persecution, nothing. Things seemed to stop them. Angry mobs came to them with swords and with guns, and like Jesus, they passed through the multitudes, and they could not find them. But they went forth in the name of the Lord, and everywhere they stretched forth their hands. The sick were healed, the blind eyes were opened. There was not a long prayer, and after I had reviewed the vision many times in my mind, and I thought about it many times, I realized that I never saw a church, and I never saw or heard a denomination, but the These people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As they marched forth and everything they did is the ministry of Christ in the end times, these people were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, even millions, seemed to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of the coming kingdom in the last hour. It was so glorious. But it seems as though there were those that rebelled and they would become angry and they tried to attack those workers that were giving the message. God is going to give the world a demonstration in this last hour as the world has never known before. These men and women are all of walks of life, degrees, uh, will mean nothing. I saw these workers as they were going over the face of the earth. When one would stumble and fall, another would come and pick him up. There were no big eyes and little U's, but every mountain was brought low and every valley was exalted. And they seemed to have one thing in common. There was a divine love, a divine love that seemed to flow forth from these people as they worked together and as they lived together. 
It was the most glorious sight that I have ever known. Jesus Christ was the theme of their lives. They continued and it seemed the days went by as I stood and behold this sight and I could only cry and sometimes I laughed. It was so wonderful as these people went throughout the face of the whole earth bringing forth in this last end time. And as I watched from the very heaven itself, there were times when great deluges of this liquid light seemed to fall upon great congregations and that congregation would lift up their hands and seemingly praise God for hours and even days as the Spirit of God came upon them. God said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And that is exactly this thing. And to every man and every woman that received this power and the anointing of God, the miracles of God, there was no ending to it. We have talked about miracles. We have talked about signs and wonders. But I could not help but weep as I read again this morning, at four o'clock this morning, the letter from our native workers. This is only the evidence of the beginning for one man, a do-nothing unheard of, who would go and stretch forth his hand and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to flow into your body. I dropped to my knees and began to pray again and said, Lord, I know this time is coming soon. Can you lift your hands and declare that right now? I know this time is coming soon and even nigh upon us. And this again, as these people were going about the face of the earth, a great persecution seemed to come from every angle. Suddenly there was another great clap of thunder that seemed to resound around the world. And I heard again the voice, the voice that seemed to speak. Now this is my people, this is my beloved bride. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth and could see the lakes and the mountains. The graves were opened and the people from all over the world, the saints of all ages seemed to be rising. And as they rose from the grave, suddenly all these people came from every direction, from the east, the west, the north, and the south, and they seemed to be forming again into this gigantic body. As the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first, I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvelous. It was so far beyond anything that I could ever dream or think of. But as this body suddenly began to form and take shape again, it took shape again in the form of this mighty giant, but this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle, and its body began to form. And the people of all ages seemed to be gathered into this body, and slowly, slowly, as it began to form up into the very heavens, suddenly from the heavens above, the Lord Jesus came and became the head. And I heard another clap of thunder that said, This is my beloved bride, for whom I have waited. She will come forth, even tried by fire. This is she that I have loved from the beginning of time. As I watched, my eyes suddenly turned to the far north and I saw seemingly destruction, men and women in anguish and crying out, and buildings in destruction. Then I heard again the fourth voice that said, Now is my wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. From the ends of the whole earth, the wrath of God seemed to be poured out and it seemed that there were great vials of God's wrath being poured out upon the face of this earth. I can remember it as though it happened a moment ago. I shook and trembled as I beheld the awful sight of seeing the cities and whole nations going down into destruction. I could hear the weeping and the wailings. I could hear people crying. They seemed to cry as they went into caves, but the caves and the mountains opened up. They leaped into water, but the water would not drown them. There was nothing that could destroy them. They were wanting to take their lives, but they could not. Then again, I turned my eyes to this glorious sight, this body arrayed in beautiful white shining garments. Slowly, slowly, it began to lift from the earth, and as it did, I awoke. What a sight I had beheld. I had seen the end time ministry, the last hour. And again on July 27th at 2.30 in the morning, the same revelation, the same vision came again exactly as it did before. My life has been changed as I realized that we are living in that end time, 1961. 
For all over the world, God is anointing men and women with this ministry. It will not be a doctrine. It will not be churchianity. It is going to be Jesus Christ. They will give forth the word of the Lord and are going to say, I heard it so many times in the vision and according to my word, it shall be done. In the name of the Lord, lift your hands. Salam Shilal Tovramano Solopor Vinaya Solo. Can I ask you a question tonight? Wherever you are in the building, wherever you are watching online, tell me this. Did the move of God burn within your belly? Was there a time? Can I ask you this also, what brought you to Tulsa? What brought you here? What's bringing people to Tulsa? You see what I talked about tonight I want to ask you, if it did burn in you, is it still burning in you? Do you still see? Do you still have that hunger? Do you still believe that there was a reason that God sent you to this city? You see, I've always said it, Tulsa is not a destination. You don't come here because of the beauty. You don't come here to get free from allergies. You don't come here just for business. You don't up your family from another state, another place to come and then forget about the reason that you came. If anything, we should be stepping things up in our lives because this move is coming and even now is at the door. Pray in the spirit with me all over this room. I can't keep the fire burning in your belly. I can't keep that prayer alive within you. But I know there's been lots of people come over the years that came. And I'm telling you, they come to this place. And I'm telling you, they find something here of a refreshing. They, they find something here of an a kinship, a prayer. But you have to stay in that. You can't allow churchianity. You can't allow religiosity. You can't allow just churchiness to creep in, just the works of it. You have to keep this alive in your belly. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You can't allow this ever to grow dim. You can't allow this ever. You have to stay with the same commitment. You have to stay with the same conviction. You have to stay. Come on, guys. You have to stay with it because I'm telling you what the enemy wants to do is he wants to sideline you. He wants to get you over here. He wants to get you, you know, just, just enough out of the fire, but now you become judgmental. Now you become criticizing. Now you become, you know what, a judge of everything. God wants you back in the fire. God wants you back in the middle of what it is that he is doing. Lives change, life changes. I understand. But I know this, that what got you started is what you'll have to stay on and you'll have to finish on it. 
And you cannot make a decision in God if you're not burning with the same fire that you burned with years ago, that you made a decision to change your world, to make changes in your world because of that fire and because of that hunger. If you don't have that fire and you don't have that hunger, you cannot make any more changes until you get that fire and that hunger back. Because those changes that aligned you with the plan and the purpose of God were made because of the fire, because of hunger. Am I speaking the truth tonight? And so I bring these things to you. I bring them in vulnerability because even I am challenged by certain things. I have to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. I have to ensure that I am doing what it is the Spirit of God is having me do and also facilitating what it is that is in other people's lives to be done by the Spirit of God. And I'm sure you've realized after this period of time that this is just not a place that people attend. This is a training center. This is a place of mobilization and activation. This is a place of bringing people to a realization that they were called for more. I want you to shut it out. I'm called for more. Come on, say it like you mean it. I'm called for more. So when Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed of the enemy, can I speak to those that believe that you're called into ministry? Are you doing that? Are you actively every day like Jesus was, going about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed of the enemy? If you feel like you're really called into ministry, are you really walking the aisles of Walmart looking for your next victim? If you feel like you're called to preach, why haven't you built yourself a pulpit? At the junction of 71st and Memorial. Why haven't you bought yourself a megaphone? And walk about the parking lot of the mall. The security people won't let us walk about there, Will. Let them try to get you off the property. If you really feel like you're called, is there evidence of that call? I'm not talking within the church walls. But yet it burns within you. If you're called to a certain vein in business, it burns within you. If you're called to certain things in the ministry, it burns within you. It is you. It's what you do. It's what you do everywhere that you go. There's no mistaking it. Lots of people say to me, Pastor, we need to get this going at church and this going at church and this going at church and this going at church. And it's great. I believe we can get it to the place that we have a 24 seven. But what are you doing 24 seven? It's gonna take workers. It's gonna take laborers. It's gonna take people saying, I can put my hand to it, but I don't have time to that. What about my family? Bring your family into it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it successfully. Bring your family into it. Serve the Lord together. That's how you do it. I sense the anointing of heaven. Jambalajolavara Divya Mara Solovara Tovaratai. 
Vengeola projela papa. We're living in days, ladies and gentlemen. They tell us that churches are closing at an all-time high. Pastors are getting out of ministry at an all-time high. Disillusionment, disappointment. I don't understand why. But I don't judge. I don't criticize. I know what it's like to do what I do. And I wouldn't wish this upon another person. I go to bed with everybody. I get up with everybody. I go to bed with my wife, but I go to bed with, <laughs> with everybody in my heart. I wake up with everybody in my heart. Karn has to share. Now you people come along and they say, you know what, Pastor, you just need to shut off a while. But how can you shut off the call? You can't shut it off. Even when you go and try and lie on a beach, lift your hand and say, yes, Lord, hallelujah. Even when you go and try and lie on a beach, you're lying on a beach and, and then the next thing, things are stirring within you. People are stirring within you. Because people's what you do. You wonder why the enemy wants to attack you so bad? Because he does not want you fulfilling the plan and purpose of God. And that's why everything that we've said today, everything that we've said tonight, I pray that you've got something out of it. Because I believe with all my heart that Jesus is coming. If you believe that, shout a big amen. But he's not coming for a limping, busted church. Make sure that your heart's full. Make sure that you love the Lord with all your heart. Make sure that you're not fooling yourself. Don't change your world and go to some lukewarm church that'll just facilitate your lukewarmness and say it's the Lord. The Lord doesn't lead you out of the fire. He leads you into the fire. He doesn't lead you into apathy. He doesn't lead you into religion. He doesn't lead you into cute street that you can just live your life and then give God an hour and a half on a Sunday. Even if you're in business. Believe by faith for God to bring people that can help you in the business so that you can serve the Lord. If that's the direction the Lord has you go. Hallelujah. Take the hand of the person beside you right now. I sense such a strong anointing. Whoa! Such a strong anointing. Pray in the Spirit all over this place. Fresh on brombo suco frefiosto la papra pedasima. Benjo la papra pedoso lo torfedesle. Bonjo la papra pedoso lo mine. Bonjour, bonjour, la babara da jolapata. Bonjour, le pauvre pédis, le pauvre pédis, le nom bronze sort. Verskin, zor, zor, zor. Jarvi, jor, mor, jolo, mor, davin. Endor, jolabar, te vesin. Benjour, le pauvre dai. Benjour, le pauvre, ya, stolamana, ha, prefedes, colovo, romano, jolo. Manjour, le pauvre, vedes, jolabar, te va, jolabar, te finish. Monjour, le pauvre, te finish, jolabar, pédis. Banjo la parvera, jolo mor pide jolo corvi. Banjo la paia. Bar zor pide jolo mar pano jolo por menini. Banjo la por pide jolo propados con ombrata. Banjo la par bi jo mbrokosha. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And there's so much to be done. So much to be done. So much to be done. In the name of Jesus. Phew. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. If you got something out of this tonight, wave at me right now. What are we going to do with it? You're going to get up tomorrow. You're going to secure the armor of God. You're going to take authority and exercise the power of attorney in Jesus' name. You're going to stand upon your watch. Say, Pastor, that's for the real spiritual. No, that's for all of us. You're going to stand upon your watch. And you declare that you will never be a casualty in this.